Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting lesson from SAGET Tech. My name is Asaf and I hope you enjoy this one. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below this video for us to be able to keep producing more and more of these wonderful, wonderful and exciting videos. Hello once more, today we are treating technology grade 9 and our topic is mechanical systems and control as done in term 2. We are focusing today on the gear ratio. We've already done gears in grade 8, but now we're getting a bit deeper into gears. We started straight away with uh, the three quantities, the number of teeth, the speed, and the force, which are very crucial when coming to calculation in gears. And we say the ultimate quantity that is needed in any system as the output. Gear systems, that's no exception. Heavy duty vehicles like land graders need high output force to perform their duty, whereas the race cars need high speed output to perform very good. It is therefore very, very important to know uh, the size of the gear that gives high force and the one that gives high speed. And let's start uh, by explaining. The two gears. We say the small gear with few number of teeth will rotate faster than the bigger gear with more number of teeth. So when the gear is too small, it makes a, a more rotation like than a bigger gear. We, I'm going to demonstrate that uh, just after this, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. And as well, or therefore, the bigger gear with more number of teeth will give us bigger force as compared to the smaller gear. I'll repeat this. The smaller gear will give us more rotation, meaning that it will give us high speed, whereas the bigger gear with more teeth or more number of teeth will give us bigger force. It means when you need a larger force, you must use the bigger gear. But if you need a high speed, you must use a smaller gear. Let's, let's, let's do an experiment here. We've got two gears that are meshing together at that uh, black dot. Uh, I think you can, you, you, can, you can notice that they are meshing here, these two gears. Now, this one is going to rotate this way. This smaller gear will rotate in the anti-clockwise direction, whereas the bigger gear will be rotating in the clockwise direction. Now, every time this one make a full cycle or rotation, we, we would uh, want to see how far have this bigger one traveled. Let's check. This small one in this regard is, a, is an input or a driver gear and this one is an output gear or a driven gear. Therefore, uh, the smaller one in this regard is driving the bigger one. Now, uh, I want us to draw the table here or the truth table of the two gases here, of the two gears here. Now we've moved this one, the full cycle or the full rotation, and look at how far the bigger gear has went, just here. And the one, the, the small one or the driver has made one revolution, but this one still at zero. Let's move forward. Let's move this one a, a revolution again and see how far uh, is the bigger gear going to move. After the second revolution, it's still uh, not even at 180 degrees. There it is. The second rotation of the input gear, the output gear still doesn't make a full revolution. Let's move it, rotate the input gear once more. It has moved once more. It's almost, no, no, no it's before 270, but it's after 180. Still, after the third rotation, the output gear haven't yet made a single cycle or full uh, cycle or rotation. Now, we're going to try and move this one for the first time. It have moved for the first time. Now it looks like it, at least now it's giving us a uh, 270, but still it doesn't make a full revolution. Until we do, we make the last revolution on the input gear, now they mirror again at the same point. Only after the fifth revolution of the input or driver gear will our bigger gear, which is the output gear, give us the first revolution. We therefore say 
the ratio of the input gear to the output gear give us 5 is to 1. This one will rotate 5 times before this one can rotate or can make only one revolution or can rotate for the very first time. Now, this brings us to the concept of gearing up and gearing down. You see, gearing down is basically reducing the speed and gearing up means increasing the speed. So in this regard, remember, the input is at 5, the output is at 1. It means that we are reducing the speed. We are gearing down. Although the output gear is bigger than the input, input gear, but here we are saying we are gearing down. Gearing down only refers to the speed. And when we are gearing up, we are increasing the speed and it would therefore mean the bigger gear is driving the smaller gear. We call it a gearing up, which means increasing the speed. Now, uh, we can therefore conclude by saying the bigger the gear, the more the teeth, the more the force, but the lesser the speed. I think we've seen that uh, when we increase the number of teeth, it means the gear is bigger. And the bigger gear will always give us the um, better force or the bigger force, but less speed. If we need speed, remember what I said, we need to have a very small gear. Um, it therefore implies that the number of teeth is directly proportional to the applied force and inversely proportional to the uh, exhaust speed. It means when you're driving a car, when you're going uphill, you've got to reduce speed. When you reduce speed, it means that you're increasing force that will take you or that will be able to take you up the hill. But then uh, it means we would have got to go to the bigger gear with more teeth in order to get more force. But when you are on the incline, I mean decline, when you're going down the mountain or on the um, road that is not sloping, you've got to increase the speed. When you increase the speed, you will then be moving from the bigger gear to the smaller gear so that the smaller gear can rotate many a times and give you faster uh, speed. That's basically what this means. Now we come to the gear ratio. Like I said, the number of teeth is always directly proportional to the uh, force of the gears. Therefore, if I'm going to say the gear ratio is number of teeth on the output gear to the number of teeth on the input gear, it therefore means Similarly, num uh, the force of the output gear is to the force of the input gear. Remember, they are directly proportional, meaning that when one increases, the other increases. But when both of them increases, what we have in the speed, the speed decreases. Now, I always say this type of a ratio is a comparison ratio. It's not a calculation ratio. When you do calculation ratios, we are going to do it mathematically with, if we are going to be dividing. Like I said, therefore, the speed of an input gear is to the speed of an output gear. These two goes together. The number of teeth and force goes together. But now when you come to the speed, it's an inverse. Now, this is the comparison. Now, let's go to the mathematical one, which uh, as we use when we calculate. They are still the same. But if you compare, you still have got to say the first gear is to the second gear. Now, let's check. Uh, the gear ratio of um, using mathematical calculation. We no more say the teeth is to the, the, the teeth of input is to the teeth of the output, but we, that we now say number of teeth in the output gear over number of put, uh, teeth in the input gear is our ratio. And we can also count, calculate our ratio as force of the output gear over force of the input. You see, they are all the same. The output is on top for both of them. But because the speed is inversely proportional to the two, we are going to say the gear ratio in terms of speed is speed of an input gear over speed of an output 
Now, the other important thing when you do calculations that you need that need to be born in your mind is one of the quantities should have both the input and the output for you to be able to calculate the ratio. You are either given uh, the input number of uh, teeth and uh, the output uh, number of teeth, or you're given uh, input force and output force, or you're given the input speed and output speed for you to be able to calculate the gear ratio. In the next lesson, you are going to be doing the actual calculations. Now, what, you're going, what we're doing is just for us to get to understand where the formula formula I come from. But now on the next lesson, which is the final lesson on uh, gear ratio, we'll be then doing the actual calculation and manipulating the main formula in order to calculate individual component, being it input uh, number of teeth or output number of teeth or input force or output force or um, input speed or output speed as well as the gear ratio. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, be sure to uh, come back to uh, and check the next lesson on gear ratio, which will be the final one where, like I said, we'll be doing our calculations. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe.